Junkie Nation, what's going on? Gorgeous George and Goes delivering another MMA superstar here on our video hotline. It's Austin Vanderford, 9-0, Bellator middleweight. What's going on, Austin? Thank you so much. Hey, you're in Alaska, huh? What, what's going on up there? Is that a, a vacation or you got family up there? Yeah, this is where this is where I'm from originally. So uh, here for a little vacation. Um you know, I had I had surgery right after my last fight on my hand, so I thought this was a, a great place to to come and heal for a couple weeks. And we're uh, back on the road on Friday, so we're here for a couple more days and then back to Florida on Friday. And by the way, when you say on the road, is it really a road trip, or are you going to be flying from Alaska? We're to Florida? Fly, yeah, we're flying, okay. but part of it we we got to drive. My uh, my hometown's a little ways out, so we. Got to drive to Anchorage, and then we'll fly out from there. I got you. You know, it's fun. I wanted to ask you, um, when I think of Alaska, okay, so you're from Alaska. I know Justin Buckholz is from Alaska. And then I had a buddy who used to work on one of those uh, fishing boats, you know, and he yeah. talked about how hard, the hardest work ever, and he got paid well or whatever. Does Alaska have – a little bit of that tough guy image, kind of like when we think about Hawaii. Oh, everyone in Hawaii gets down. What about Alaska? Alaska boys, do, do they throw down a lot too or what? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I think probably in Hawaii is a little bit more. But, uh, but yeah, I think of, you know, in Alaska, it's it's tough and there's there's hard work to be done. And, and uh, we don't really have a lot of the luxuries and whatnot that kind of the lower 48 or some other places have. And, and uh, I, I think it was just – coming up a little different uh you know learning hard work at a younger age and and whatnot not that people you know anywhere else don't experience that as well but uh but i think it's a little more common for for people in alaska you know fish in the summer and and uh do all that and i think that kind of instills a hard work mindset in you uh austin i met you a few years ago at um final fight at the rio hotel yeah yeah and you know, it's been a couple of years, but to me, it looked like maybe you could also make welterweight, even though you've been successful as a middleweight. Is middleweight your permanent home, or do you have flexibility? Uh, actually, so when you saw me, when you saw me at the final fight, I was fighting at welterweight, and uh, and uh, I actually just moved to ten and zero as well. So I was, uh, yeah, I was fighting at welterweight. I I've only fought three fights at at middleweight now, so. Um, and that was just a decision because, uh, yeah, I was having a hard time making welterweight, and and you know, I I think uh, I think you could look at someone and say, you know, well, he should be a welterweight or whatever. But I think it comes down to what you feel and and uh, wanting to have longevity in the sport. And I felt that fighting at middleweight was gonna help out with that and and allow me to fight for a lot longer. Okay, I only asked for this reason. Um, just seemed like middleweight with that huge Grand Prix that they had, million dollars, and they seem to have more depth there as well. That's why I was wondering it. Now, you could be one of the ones that leads to, you know, spearheads the charge to put more middleweights on the map over there. Now they got their champion and everything. But it seemed like that division, that, that cupboard was a little bit more bare, I guess. So that, that's why I, 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 I asked you that. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, all right. So now let me ask you this. I was going on your Instagram, and you had a nice, cool pic with the family for Thanksgiving. But yeah. I also wanted to ask you something that you and your wife have become very popular for, and that's your, your Instagram post that have to do nothing with fighting. What's that conversation like when you do get to meet up with family? Are they like, you know, hey, looks like you're having a good time? Or, you know, like, because you guys can get steamy, I guess, at times. Yeah, our family's super supportive of us, and uh, you know they they know we're fun people, and and they you know know our personalities more than anyone else. So, uh, you know what what might be a surprise to to the outside world really isn't to our family. Just you know, because because they know us and they know our our true personalities and whatnot. So they're just having a good chuckle. Then it's no big deal. That that's all. That's all. Uh, that's our Austin there. Yeah, we just have a fun time, man. That's that's what our family's all about. We have a good time, and that's why we enjoy coming back home and, and being with family and, and uh, cool. kind of getting to disconnect from that world and, and uh, just be with our family. Uh, Austin, you and your wife are successful professional athletes. You guys have a huge social media following. When you guys do put up those pictures, 
Is there a request to do more of that, or does that come from you and your wife that you guys just want to do more of those types of picks? Yeah, it just comes down to to her and I, and and uh, you know, wanting to post what we want to post, and and uh, really not really caring, giving too much care to to what anyone else. You know, we had fun, especially during quarantine when we were doing the the kind of nude photos and stuff. It was just fun for us to do and something that uh, we wanted to do, and and so we went with it and. It wasn't really due to any requests or we just came up one day, you know, uh, I think, honestly, I think I was running around the house naked and I was out doing pull-ups or something and it, and the idea kind of sparked and we did it. Yeah, I got you. All right. And and I'm wondering, you know, nowadays, man, we're so much available on Netflix and MTV, of course, uh, reality shows or whatever. I mean, you guys get those types of, approaches you know to maybe just follow you two around or forgive me if that's already happening and maybe i haven't done enough of my homework i already missed the nine and oh ten and oh so that could be the case uh, uh yeah you know what we we've got our youtube channel a kick-ass love story and and uh, that's kind of something that is a passion project for us and something that we want to do and we've had some offers to to do stuff but uh really you know we want to keep things authentic and and uh just give a little taste of, you know, what it's like being a married MMA couple and, and kind of the lifestyle that we live and what we go through and, and whatnot. So that's kind of the thing that we enjoy doing the most is our, our YouTube channel, our blog. Do you guys have input on each other's career when it, when it comes to um, either the fights themselves or the decisions of, you know, which promotions to go to or anything like that? Uh, yeah, you know, we really, we have a really good management team first round and uh, they're doing a good job at, at navigating our careers and, and stuff. And, and of course, you know, we have input like any married couple would have, but, uh, you know, we really leave a lot of that to to our managers and, and uh, what they think the best thing for our career. And, you know, uh, Malky Kawan, Abe, they've uh, done a really good job at building up stars and and uh, navigating other people. Okay. I guess what the reason I was asking, um, and you've been really gracious in answering a lot of these non-MMA questions. I mean, you really don't have a fight on the books yet. You're coming off a win a few months ago. Um, then again, of course, they call you the gentleman, so <laughs> I'd expect nothing less. I wanted to ask you, when it, I, I was taken surprised a little bit when Paige went to Bare Knuckle. Now, I know David Feldman very well. I've seen that organization go from – you know, it's infancy to it's become pretty big, you know. So I know that they that they treat their athletes well, pay them well and everything. But uh, still, I guess it caught me out of nowhere. Did you have any input in that decision for her to go to bare knuckle and just kind of sidestep from MMA for now? Of course. I mean, I, you know, I've been her husband and we make uh, we make decisions together and whatnot. But, uh, you know, again, that kind of came down to our management team and and, uh, you know, just having a plan in place and, and uh, implementing that and, and doing all that stuff. So, you know, I mean, of course, I, I've spoke before, uh, you know, I, I thought that it'd be cool to have her fight in Bellator with me and, and do that. But at the same time, you know, David Feldman's a, a great guy and, and uh, I think he's got a he's got a big vision for the BKFC and uh, I'm excited for her and for him and for the organization to to grow and, and kind of see what's going to happen. You know, Bellator has, we're, we're going to go back to Hawaii, Alaska talk here. Bellator has gone to Hawaii, something the UFC hasn't done. And they've done very well there. They've done shows, you know, in successive years. And I wanted to ask you, what about uh, Alaska? Have you ever asked Scott Coker about that possibility? No, I haven't, but that would be awesome. It would be fun to uh, to fight in, in my home state and, and do all that. But no, that's never been a conversation that I've had with him. So, uh, But if he listens or if this gets out there, I'd love to, to have a card in Alaska. I'd love to headline it. Austin, I know you've talked about taking things slow with your career because you want to be really ready when it comes to title, title talk and all that. Um, that decision process, it, who's going to know when the time is right? Is that solely an Austin decision, a management decision, Bellator decision? Um, when do you feel like you'll know that answer and, and who's kind of responsible for it? Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, I think it comes down to Bellator and my management team. And I've 
I've always been a, a fighter and a fight first and and I uh, just want to I just want to fight and the opponent doesn't really matter that much to me. The move to Florida, especially a team like American Top Team that just has so many good fighters on that roster. What was it like um you know, some fighters talk about when they get to a gym, they feel like it takes a while for, before people will embrace them. Uh, but King Mo has said some great stuff about you. Were there any of those moments where it was almost intimidating seeing so many great athletes in one place and training with them? Uh, I wouldn't say intimidating. Um, you know, I'm confident in my skill set and, and where I'm at and and all that. So I wouldn't necessarily say intimidating. But, uh, but of course, uh, as any new move and and whatnot, it took a little adjustment, but man, it couldn't have gone as smooth. And uh, my head coach, Coach Pahumpa, such a great guy, a loving coach, and really cares about me and, and Paige and and uh, really all the coaches there. I couldn't say, I honestly couldn't say enough good things about uh, American Top Team and being there and the coaching staff and the training partners, Dan Lambert and uh, all those. I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, we were able to do that and you know, still stay in contact too with our our home team in uh, Portland and whatnot, and and everything's been really great. Austin, just the final thing from me here. I've been a big proponent of switching the weight classes up and um, creating 175 and 165, so that basically we can say all the way from 105, which is an atom weight division that exists for the ladies, all the way to 205, we'd be 10 pounds apart. And finally, just remove 170, uh, retire. Yeah. You know, it's not like a, it's not like a division's never been retired before. It's it's happened, and so not to push the whole middleweight welterweight thing again. But if that happened, do you stay at 185, or would you then consider 175, being that 175 is obviously easier to make than than the 170 that seemed to give you that uh, some struggles? Yeah, for sure. I would definitely. I'd fight at 175 and. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I, I'll be a little undersized at, at middleweight, but uh, you know, I've already in Bellator fought a, fought some tall guys and and uh, some bigger guys. So, uh, but yeah, it, to go back to that, I would definitely I think 175 would be a, a better weight class. So you are 10 and 0, and you've already you know won under the Bellator banner multiple times. And but let's say that you did have an opportunity to fight for a world title at 10 and 0. Do you feel like you're ready for that? Because sometimes it comes down to the actual experience and being ready for the moment. Like Gegard Mousasi has been doing this for a minute. I'm not saying you can't beat him, but I'm just saying, you know, sometimes that experience is pretty valuable for a lot of athletes. So would you even be interested in something soon in your career like that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, just getting the opportunity. You never know when that opportunity is going to come there whether you'll get another shot at it or not. So really, I mean, if I had the opportunity now, I'd jump right at it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think for anyone, you know, there's all the experiences is uh, beneficial and helpful, but you know, a lot of times we don't have that, that luxury of the perfect time and whatnot. And, and I also feel like for myself as a fighter and an athlete, I'm someone who rises to the occasion and, and uh, you know, rises to the competition and whatnot. So I think it'd be it would be good for me. And and uh, you know, if the opportunity was there, I'd take it a hundred percent. And thank you very much for the interview. Uh, we had a great time talking to you. I hope you have a safe holiday season. Can't wait to hear what your next fight is in twenty twenty one. And hopefully, we can catch up on fight week and preview that. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. And I'm so sorry too about the internet. I'm glad we got a little bit of something. So I appreciate you guys. Awesome. All right. Take care, Austin. We'll see you. Yep, you too.